Well, it's been a while, but we're back at it. I don't think we need any introduction. It's a first-round mock draft. Let's do it. With the first pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Trevor Lawrence, quarterback, Clemson. I mean, there's nothing really to elaborate on. we got a long day ahead of us. I'm sorry, Jets fans. Now, I will say this. This is my one elaboration. The plan, we'll see how much I can get done this weekend. The plan is to elaborate on this first round mock draft, meaning today we do the first round, and then tomorrow we start with the Jets seven round mock draft, but using this first round um, template as the template or whatever. Um, so that means tomorrow it'll be a seventh round mock draft, starting with Trevor Lawrence in round one. So that's that's the best I can give you. Tune in tomorrow, Trevor Lawrence to the Jets. With the second pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Justin Fields, quarterback, Ohio State. Probably not, still not a ton to elaborate on here. Um, there was a very brief period of time where uh, Minshew was thought to be the, the next guy. And, and maybe if you're picking at like 20, you just roll with them and, and try to go a different direction. But if you're picking at two, you're taking a quarterback. Um, the only possible, you know, shake up here is if you think there's a better quarterback than Justin Fields, which is certainly debatable. And I'm sure at this point in time, and I'm actually interested to see what the comments are because I haven't done this in a while. Um, the last time I did a mock draft, this wouldn't be a question. I'm curious now, you know, Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, um, possibly even, you know, the Alabama quarterback or whatever. I don't know, but I am curious in the comment section. Otherwise, though, I don't think there's going to be a lot of arguments, so we're just going to leave it at that. Justin Fields to the Jaguars. With the third pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Panay Sewell, offensive tackle, Oregon. Again, we're in kind of the boring part, and this has happened the last several years where the first you know, several picks pending any kind of trade or anything is kind of a, a, a known thing. We'll see how the, the, uh, the draft order shakes up, but I mean, if it falls Jets, Jaguars, Bengals, it's probably going to be Lawrence Fields and Sewell. Um, again, there may be somebody comes up to get a quarterback or something, and, and, and also I'm starting to hear a little bit of rumbling about uh, Sewell as maybe a little bit overrated. Um, I tend to think that's either people just trying to, you know, be, uh, I don't want to necessarily say shock jock, but be outside of the norm. Uh, but even so, I don't think anyone, even those people would disagree with this pick because he's clearly the best. I guess I shouldn't say that. Again, comment section if you disagree, but I tend to think he's clearly the best offensive tackle. If not, you know, generational talent, as a lot of people say, clearly the best in this particular draft. So again, seems straightforward to me. Bengals, Penny Sewell, done deal. With the fourth pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Dallas Cowboys are going to trade their pick to the Detroit Lions. The Lions will come up from nine to four. They will offer up a second round pick. If I can look at the details here quickly, they're going to give back a fourth um, in that trade. But with the fourth pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Trey Lance, quarterback, North Dakota State. Um, you know, the, look, they just fired their head coach. They're clearly moving in a different direction. I don't know if Bevel's going to stick around or what, but I think they need to go in an offensive direction. Um, this isn't meant to be necessarily a slam on um, Matt Stafford, but clearly that ship has sailed, right? I mean, it's not even that he's that bad. It's just a matter of we want better, right? Why settle for a mid-tier quarterback that clearly is not getting us over that hump? And I know there's more to this, but... Um, I mean, look, if, if you're rebuilding, this is where it starts. So we're going to have a new head coach. We're going to have a new GM. And one of the first things you're going to want to do is get a uh, quarterback. And I, I just think from a Packers fan perspective, which I am, Trey Lance scares me the most because of his mobility. Um, I mean, flashbacks of guys like Colin Kaepernick or Michael Vick always have given problems to the Green Bay Packers so at the very least you got two wins in, in the division every single year because unless you've, you're just terrible um, that's just going to be a night and, and it, it's that way for everybody um, but in particular man the Packers are just they just suck at that and they always have it's just a it's deep in our DNA but um, I, I think I think Lions fans are going to like that I don't know again comments with the fifth pick in the 2021 NFL draft the L.A. Chargers will also accept a trade, this time from the Denver Broncos. The Broncos will be giving their second-round pick, pick 43, to come up from 12 
to five. And with the fifth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Denver Broncos select Zach Wilson, quarterback, BYU. Look, I've been hearing from Broncos fans about it's, you know, we got a great quarterback, everything's going to be fine, it's all going to be fine and dandy. That guy was always terrible, in, in my opinion. Locke was never the answer. He was never a good quarterback. You now have invested so much in wide receivers, in your tight end. You've, you've gone out and tried to fix or improve your offensive line. The defense has taken massive steps. Uh, I know this year is not great, but it's just one of those things where everything kind of falls apart. But the point is, I saw this as a year in which the defense really looked like it could be pretty special. The offense looked like it could be special. It really just came to Drew Locke. You can go back and watch videos where I said that. And um, it just didn't work. I don't know if Vic Fangio is going to be around. There's rumors he's going to get fired. Um, I think that's a little bit silly, but I, I guess I don't know. I, I think I like Vic Fangio. I think you keep him around. You keep that defense stout. You get a guy like Zach Wilson. You get a real, If you don't like your offense, go out and get a new offensive coordinator. But... Um, with Zach Wilson and these wide receivers who are not only talented but really young and ascending, Jerry Judy and whatnot, um, I just think that this still has the, the potential. And it's it's not like a distant thing. Like for the Lions, we got Trey Lance. We still got a lot of work to do. We got to worry about wide receivers. You know, a lot of guys are leaving. We still got Galladay, but we got to figure out the rest of that. You know, the offensive line is kind of being shuffled. The running backs, there's a lot of weird stuff, like with Swift not having his head in the game, and the defense is kind of a mess, and your old coach went out and got a bunch of weird pieces. So it's, it's just, you got a ways to go. But the point is, the Broncos, it's not that it's perfect, but it's kind of plug and play. We're kind of ready to, to take a swing at this. Maybe we go out in free agency and get a couple pieces here and there. Our key piece on defense is getting a little bit long in the tooth, getting a little bit older. The production kind of falling off so maybe we got to figure that out but I, I kind of think we're pretty close to, to making a, a run here depending on how NFL ready Zach Wilson's going to be but but we're taking a big swing here we got to do it the Broncos take Zach Wilson with the fifth pick with the sixth pick in the 2021 NFL draft the Philadelphia Eagles select Jamar Chase wide receiver LSU I this was the first extremely painful pick for me I didn't I don't, I don't like it, but I, I don't know what else to do. The offense is just so bad, and, and it's clear that the wide receivers are a serious problem, and I was wrong. This year's draft, I said corner is more important. It's still important, and you'll see as we do, I have an Eagles mock draft done as well. We're going to look at that, but um, Jamar Chase was a needed pick, and unfortunately, he's not contributing, so we're going to keep trying. I, 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 this is closer to the, the, the Lions. It might even be worse because I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do about our quarterback. I'm not sure what to do about wide receiver necessarily. I mean, obviously, we're going to add pieces to it. Um, the offensive line, I feel like, is really important. Similar to Dallas, it's one of those things that starting to erode and it's really affecting things. Same with the defensive line. It's, it's still relatively strong, but it's also our base, and we've got to keep it strong if we're going to stay a, a, a tough team. It doesn't do any good to say, well, it's still strong enough. Let's focus on other areas and allow that to erode. We need to keep that going. So there's just... My head's just kind of spinning here, but it's kind of like, you know, we've got so many issues. I don't want to overthink it. Let's take best player available. And again, it's the offense that's a, one of the biggest problems. Granted, Wentz is probably maybe the core issue here, but you look at the passing offense. It's, I want to say, last in the NFL. So, we're, we're again, we're not going to overthink it. Jamar Chase is the best player, and we're hoping to get a spark. Where to go from here? There's a lot of questions, but this is what we're doing at this particular point in time. With the seventh pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Patrick Sertan, cornerback, Alabama. Uh, linebacker makes a lot of sense here, and I'm sure a lot of people wanted Micah Parsons. I just don't like taking linebackers this early. It, it generally is not panning out for the teams that are doing it. Um, I, it's, it's also not as important of a position. And look, we're, we're lacking in talent as well as depth. For the the cornerback position for the Panthers and, and if we can get a genuine lockdown corner that's so much more valuable than than a linebacker um, obviously there's questions of if, if Micah Parsons is the guy everyone says he is I probably take it I just don't buy it you know I, I just I worry that he's not and and in order to take him instead of a a top tier corner he's got to be really 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 good and I'm just worried he's not and, and, and if he's even if he's just good not great I don't think it's a good pick. You can get linebackers later. I'm not worried about linebacker right now. Let's get an elite cornerback because we really need it. 
With the eighth pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Washington football team selects Devontae Smith, wide receiver, Alabama. I would love to get a quarterback. Very, very important that we get one eventually. Based on the board that I have right now, it's not a good pick. I understand there are several quarterbacks that some people believe are worth it. Um, maybe possibly trade back a little bit and you can get the quarterback. You know, I, I get it, but we've also got several things we can build on here. Um, and so I'm kind of just worrying about continuing to build and we'll roll with, uh, I guess, Alex Smith for now. Um, and just see how that goes. Sometimes it's just not ready. You're just not ready. It's just not time. Now, again, we got to see how this shakes out. Maybe Washington continues to lose. They get up far enough or they can get a trade partner um, and, and maybe make this thing work out. They did try in lieu of the Cowboys, but it didn't work out quite as well as far as the Lions-Cowboys trade. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, I really think Smith and McLaurin are going to be a very dynamic duo for some quarterback at some point to come in and, and make this thing work out because it, it is a decent enough defense it always kind of has been in Washington maybe not elite but but solid enough if they can get the offense figured out they'll be all right and I think they're going to get it figured out but it's not going to be a quarterback today with the ninth pick in the 2021 NFL draft the Dallas Cowboys back on the clock select Micah Parsons linebacker Penn State um, I, I think First of all, when I decided to trade back, it was pretty obvious that we were not going in the direction of replacing our quarterback. I think that's a ridiculous decision. We got to pay the man. I don't exactly know how. It doesn't matter. Um, the play that he was putting up this year was, I mean, a, it's hard to compete with some, how good some of the quarterbacks are playing this year, but let's just say in other years, he could have been in, in contention for best quarterback in the NFL. He's really having a fantastic year. I don't think the, uh, the issue is the offense outside of wanting to get the offensive line kind of back to what it is, but even that's a terrible excuse with the, the quarterback that you have that you could argue is a top five quarterback, you know, depending on his play, if it's going to stay up at the level he was in 2020, you look at the wide receiver core, you look at the running back, um, you know, maybe we could add a tight end, but the offense is not the problem. We need somebody that's better at calling plays to get in there and do that job. That's a separate discussion. But what we need to worry about is the defense because the defense has been a massive problem. And I think stopping the run has also been a massive problem. So whereas I'm generally opposed to linebackers going super early, we're kind of at the back of the top 10. Micah Parsons is a freak. He's going to be able to help against stopping the run as well as in coverage. And so uh, I, I think that this can be sort of the biggest boost for our team. Um, and so we're just we're we're going to move in that direction again we, we have more work to do in terms of getting a better play caller but once we get that offense going we just need a, a barely competent defense to really compete and i think micah parsons is a good step in that direction with the 10th overall pick in the 2021 nfl draft the atlanta falcons select gregory rousseau edge rusher miami one of the things I really, really hate is drafting a position that the team has been drafting for a while. For example, Jamar Chase and the Eagles. I know it was just last year, but the Falcons have been swinging at this for a while, trying to get this right. Um, but the fact of the matter is not only is Russo one of the top guys on the board right now, it's still a massive need. And you hate to neglect other positions because we're still trying to swing at this. And maybe if we're talking linebacker or possibly wide receiver or, or running back or whatever, we can let it slide. But edge rusher is such an important position and we're never going to be able to get anywhere if we can't provide any kind of pressure. I mean, whether that's interior or, or off the edge. We've got to get some kind of pressure going. We don't have a lot of edge rushers in this class. Rousseau is one of the few that's considered pretty premier. you got Basham and Quiddy Pay and some of the other guys. But um, as of right now, Rousseau is still seen as the top guy. Again, I hate doing it. I hate constantly swinging because we're neglecting other positions. But we got to get it right. And we're going to keep swinging until we get this right. So Gregory Rousseau to the Falcons. With the 11th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins via the Houston Texans select Jalen Waddell, wide receiver, Alabama. Let me just start by saying the Dolphins making a trade with Houston was one of the best things that they could have done. Um, seemed a little crazy at the time, but as bad as Houston is right now, the fact that they just lost two of their wide receivers, um, th this pick is probably going to get even higher. This is going to be a fantastic pick. But sitting at 11, and I've done this several times, whether it's um, Devontae Smith or Jalen Waddell, getting to a, a wide receiver from Alabama, um, it's almost been as if 
regardless of the Alabama connection, which I actually do like, it's it just ends up being a good pick either way, and it always just falls that way. The Dolphins, with one of their picks, usually it's the second one, but the way things are falling right now, it ends up being their first one. Um, getting them a wide receiver, which they need, the best on the board, and an Alabama wide receiver to pair with Tua, so they've already got that, that uh, relationship built up. It just makes a lot of sense. Um, the Dolphins are a team that are ascending. I put them in the same category as the Raiders to where I think they're actually overperforming. A big shout out to their coach. Um, I think they're overperforming their roster. I don't think they have the most um, firepower of anyone. And if you're a Dolphins fan and are offended by that, understand that it's a really big compliment because it means you're already here and your roster's here. So as you build up the roster, I mean, you, you, the the potential of this team, if you actually start building up, I mean, you don't have an elite offensive line, you don't have an elite quarterback, you don't have elite wide receivers, you don't have an elite tight end, you don't have an elite defensive line, you don't have elite linebackers. You, what, what do you have that's super elite outside of maybe one or two really good pieces? Again, it's a compliment because as we continue to build this out, it's only going to keep getting better. The coach you have right now is able to get a team to win with a lot of holes. And you've got other teams that are super talented and stacked across the board that can't win so you're in a great position so we're just going to go out and keep stacking on talent and see how how far we can take this i think the dolphins are in a great spot right now we're going to get a top tier wide receiver to add to this team and um, we're just going to keep pushing because we, we've got all the pieces we need which is a a hopefully good enough gm a solid uh head coach that's able to get this team fired up to win football games that they don't even have any business winning so um and again, I know that sounds insulting, but I'm, I'm genuinely impressed with the Dolphins and what they're doing right now and uh, optimistic for your future. So Jalen Waddell to the Dolphins. With the 12th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the LA Chargers are back on the clock after trading back from five and picking up that extra second round pick. And with the 12th pick, the Chargers select Samuel Cosme, offensive tackle out of Texas. This is the first real obvious one in a while. Again, it kind of comes down to whether you like better, you know, whether you like Leatherwood or Wyatt Davis or uh, Derisaw is getting a lot of momentum uh, recently. Um, that would be the only real complaint that I can see. But again, I try to stick to my big board, uh, which I haven't been publishing lately. It's just an aggregate big board of all the different boards out there on the on the web. So right now, that is still the consensus that caused me is is the uh, the top guy. But interestingly enough, the draft community, which end up in the comment section, end up being way ahead of where these boards are. In other words, I'll I'll have somebody like cause me on there. And everyone will say, that's stupid. It's going to be, you know, Carasaw or Derisaw, Carasaw. Derisaw is way better, way better, way better. And it's like, you guys, look, it, it is what it is. Eventually, it ends up doing this. So, so again, I, I do trust the comment section. I'm going to stick with this for now. But um, it's at least good to see it because it kind of gives me an idea of where we're going to head. Because the hit rate on the comment section is is like 75% at least in terms of, um, especially when it when it keeps getting hammered over and over and over again about a guy you know he shouldn't be picked here he shouldn't be picked here again I'm just I'm just playing along with what everybody else is saying, but um, if you think there's somebody better, I'd like to hear it. But as far as the the general position, it's going to be offensive line, ideally tackle, who does happen to be the highest position right now on my board is Samuel Cosme, who is a tackle. So it's kind of again, it's a real easy pick for me um, to take that tackle from Texas to the Chargers. With the 13th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears are going to accept a trade from the Baltimore Ravens. And with the 13th pick, the Ravens select Rashad Bateman, wide receiver, Minnesota. So we're starting to see a little bit of a decline from the Baltimore Ravens. Um, not much of one. I still think it's a dominant team, but I've been saying for a while that the there needs to be some better production from the wide receivers. I don't really believe you have a true number one. I know Hollywood is a real exciting kind of guy and people like him and whatnot, but I think he'd be a real good compliment to if, if we could get a just a real solid x you know possession you know 13 receptions in a game for 175 yards and, and two touchdowns or whatever you know just that kind of a guy and i think bateman can be the guy and, and really the trade took place because the bears wanted to move back i mentioned how the quarterbacks are just not where they need to be on the board we didn't talking for the bears now move back as far as we liked at 18 but we're going to kind of reevaluate are we willing to reach possibly trade back again 
or maybe we just take a, a, a person where we're sitting. But, um, I mean, it, it's very obvious what the Bears want to do, and there's just nobody right now. So, again, we'll, we'll get to that when we get to 18 and, and figure out what we're going to do there. But but the Ravens were the one team that are looking at it saying, you know what, I think we, we can do it. There are a lot of wide receivers in this class, but there's kind of one that's way up here, and then there's a big gap before you get to the next one on the board. So, again, they, they were willing to bite and say, you know what, let's go. Let's really take a solid swing at this because we're we're right here, man. And I, I know it's right now everyone's talking Steelers and Chiefs, and that kind of sucks because the Ravens were right there. But there's no reason to give up. I mean, we're still a real good football team. We're still real close. Didn't go great this year, we, you know, assuming you get the 18th pick, which means you missed the playoffs. Um, but, uh, again, right there, man. And Bateman can, can be the one to get you over the hump for sure. With a 14th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Carlos Basham, edge rusher, Wake Forward Forest. This one was um, pretty tough. <sighs> the offense is really doing quite well right now. Um, Kirk Cousins is playing really good football. I know some Vikings fans don't like to hear that for some reason. And I know, th I think the biggest concern with Cousins is He's, he's really, really great in spots, and he also has some really terrible moments. And, and the concern is, can he be the guy to actually get us to win a Super Bowl? Um, the only comment I would have on that is a lot of quarterbacks, up to and including Aaron Rodgers, maybe not Pat Mahomes quite as much, but they have bad days. So finding a great quarterback that's also never going to have bad days ain't going to happen. You've got a good enough quarterback. You've got the best wide receiver duo in football by a long shot. Um by my last account, PFF has them ranked number two and three in the NFL. Devontae's number one, I'm just saying. Um, so, I mean, the, the offense is, in, and again, what may be the best running back in football. The offense isn't the problem. So I'm looking at the defense. You still got Daniil Hunter. Um, you'll get Michael Pierce back next year. I, we could go corner. That is an option, but we've invested so much. I want to see if these young guys can step up. The safeties are still solid. It really just comes down to the defensive line was really so good for this team, and it's starting to fall apart. What can we do to really get this thing back on track? And again, if we get Pierce, who's going to help us mostly against the run, then we get uh, Daniil back, and we add Basham, assuming, obviously, same with all these picks, that he's a good football player. That's really going to be the one thing that's really going to get this back on track for me. you got this dominant um, offense that's really clicking. You've got two premier pass rushers. You're having a hard time running. The linebackers have an easier job. The safeties get back on track. I mean, it's hard to cover as a corner or a safety when there's no pass rush. Um, so, I mean, it just it just feels like, again, what's that one thing that's just going to make it go from this is a disaster to this team is a dominant, serious Super Bowl contender? Um, and for me, that was Basham. With a 15th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots select Sean Wade, cornerback, Ohio State. This seems unusual because it was just, what, last year that this was the most dominant defense in football? Um as I mean, primarily because of the production from their DBs. Uh, so it, a, again, it seems weird, but you look at the fact that Gilmore's production has basically completely bottomed out. He's also going into the last year of his deal in 2021. There's also guys like McCordy and Bethel who are free agents, I believe currently. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, so they're free agents in, it's always confusing when you're doing this. By the time of this draft in 2021, there's free agents, meaning they may not be back. So we're currently lacking in youth, we're lacking in talent, and we're lacking in depth. This is a serious need, and we're going to try to rectify that immediately, getting Sean Wade, cornerback out of Ohio State. With the 16th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Wyatt Davis, offensive guard, Ohio State. I'm kind of torn at least as far as as I look at it, what do 49ers fans want? I don't really know. I, I was kind of stuck because, I mean, there's questions about the quarterback, obviously. Um, I mean, when Bosa comes back, that's going to change the dynamics. So I, I, first, my first thing is, what are the 49ers when they come back in full strength? Right? Is this right back on track to being a Super Bowl contender, or are there some serious questions here? Um, the one thing that I couldn't escape outside of uh, Wyatt Davis being pretty high on the board, talented guy, was the fact that the 49ers offensive line is going to be an important piece of this sort of Shanahan outside zone thing. Um, and then you look at the fact that the talent isn't exactly where we'd like it to be. You look at the fact that Trent Williams, Ben Garland, and Tom Compton are all going to be free agents 
at the time of this draft, meaning possibly not back with the team. Um, I'm, I'm thinking they're going to re-sign Trent Williams, but he's 32 years old. And another thing to keep in mind is that right now, Lakin Tomlinson and Mike McGlinchey are in the final years of their deal in 2021, meaning you know they're going to pay McGlinchey, and it's probably going to be a hefty sum of money. And they have to think about that going forward in terms of how much do we want to invest in guys like Trent Williams, Ben Garland, and Tom Compton. So even if we keep Trent Williams, we can't keep everybody. Um, you look at Tom Compton being 31 and Garland being 32 years old. We do have a couple other guys, but nobody that's that's really, I think, a dominant player. So again, it, it seems weird, and, and there's a lot of different directions you could probably go, and I'd love to, to read the comments and see what you guys think. But this felt kind of safe, but at the same time also probably upset a lot of people because nobody wants a guard in the first round. You want something exciting. But it, it still just kind of makes sense, especially when you look at the identity of the team. We're going to dominate on defense. We're going to run the ball really, really well, and we're going to get a quarterback that can kind of just manage the game as we go along and, and just get the ball to our weapons. Um, and so for that, I just want to protect our quarterback and be able to to open up some holes so I think Wyatt Davis makes sense to me and that's the direction we're going to go with the 17th pick in the 2021 NFL draft the Las Vegas Raiders select Caleb Farley cornerback Virginia Tech I, I again this is another situation where we've really invested a lot in corners and trying to get good corners, um, early round picks and whatnot, and, and it's just not working. And our corners right now are just awful. So you're kind of in that position where do we wait, go in a different direction and hope to continue to build up the guys that we have and hope that they come along, or do we just kind of cut bait and, and start over? And again, when you look at a team like the Raiders or I mentioned about the Dolphins where it's really just a matter of, we're better than we should be. All we have to do is just keep adding, but we just keep getting stuck in quicksand where we can't get a, a talented lockdown corner. Um, you're spinning your wheels when you really should be just taking that next big step, and I'm waiting for him to take that next big step. Um, but, but the point is we've got to get that guy. And so we're going to go with Caleb Farley. Maybe if it was like a defensive tackle, I'd go in that direction. But um, given that there just are none, like zero defensive tackles in this, this class and very few edge rushers and whatnot, um, we're just going to take the, the low-hanging fruit here, uh, one of the guys at the top of the board, Caleb Fairley out of Virginia Tech. With the 18th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears back on the clock decide to stay and we're going to reach for Kyle Trask, quarterback, Florida. So, again, there's probably going to be some different opinions on value. And um, guys, you know, some people probably think Trask should have been gone by now or a different quarterback or whatever. But right now on my board, the next best quarterback is Trask at 34 overall. We're sitting at 18. So, I, you know, I think... If this was the reality, the best possible scenario would be to grab a quarterback in free agency. Possibly, if if you know the the Cowboys decide to cut bait, that would be an, a no-brainer, and I would throw everything I had at it. Um, but assuming that's not the case, assuming there's no free agent savior that's going to come in and save the day outside of just some other um, foals or some kind of backup that we're going to come in and try to game manage. I mean, are, are we really, really going to do this? And, and there's also a really good possibility that the Bears are moving on from their leadership, the coach-GM combo that's there. Um, you hate to, to start off again by uh, just kind of going all in because that's been a, a massive failure. The, the biggest difference here, I guess, is that although we're reaching, we actually traded back, which means we're getting more picks, which is important because we've been going in the wrong direction for so long, giving away all our picks. Um, but, but again, the, the biggest thing for the Bears is what are, what are you really going to do? I'm not saying there aren't other needs. The offensive line is getting terrible. It would be nice to get some, some better wide receivers. I know we have a very good one in Allen Robinson, but he doesn't want to be there anymore. And even getting another compliment. Um, I mean, I, he, literally anything. I mean, tight end, running back, offensive lineman, uh, a, a complimentary pass rusher, another defensive tackle to put next to Hicks, who's getting older, another corner to put opposite Fuller, another safety, a, 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 you know, maybe not linebacker, although I think they're overrated. PFF certainly thinks they're overrated, but, you know, you guys like them. Point is, just about every position you could justify, but what are we actually doing to start winning games if we're not going for a quarterback? So, we're going to do the ill-advised thing here. We're going to go for Kyle Trask. I don't think in, in a real-world scenario that if if a team really thought that this was a second-round pick, we'd take him at 18. But, again, I don't know what else to do. I really don't know what else to do. Every other pick is just stupid. 
that's the bottom line. So we're taking Trask and we're going to hope that it pans out. With the 19th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Giants select Alex Leatherwood, offensive tackle, Alabama. It's another painful pick. The Giants actually went out and did a lot to try to improve their offensive line. But the point is, there's, there's two points here. Number one, it failed. The offensive line is terrible. And number two, it was a really smart decision because it's super important. I actually think Daniel Jones is sneakily... Of all the quarterbacks in that class, he's taken a massive step, but it's being overshadowed by just how bad the team has been. The defense has, has been better than I expected, but it's obviously still, still needs some work. But but at the end of the day, we need a good offensive line, especially when you just look at the running back. Saquon Barkley, we invested so much in that guy, and he's got nowhere to go. Get a dominant offensive line. Protect this quarterback. Give him some time to throw, especially with his fumbling issues. Don't let anybody touch him. But also, we've got to invest in, in our running back. So it's just kind of a no-brainer. we got to get the offensive line going. Hopefully, if we can get uh, guys back and, and healthy and, and you know we can kind of see some of them take a natural progression so we don't have to replace everybody because we do have football players that have been historically pretty good football players. So I'm hoping that, again, we just get them back and, and we can kind of get back into the rhythm. But at the very least, we're going to invest in another tackle um we're, we're going to get him as well as um i can't remember his name but whatever we're, we're hopefully going to have a pretty solid um tackle duo and if we have to take more swings we'll take more swings because again i think it's the most important thing but again i'm, I'm hoping that we bring in leatherwood we get some other guys to kind of step back up and we kind of just get this thing moving a little bit because this is an example of too much talent to be this bad not that you have a lot of talent. There's a lot of holes, especially on defense. I'd like to get you a pass rusher and a corner and whatnot. But the point is, quarterback, the wide receivers aren't great, but they're competent. The the running back, you should be better. That's all I'm saying. So I think offensive line is what's going to help us the most, and that's where we're going with this. With the 20th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select Quitty Pay, edge rusher, Michigan. Now, I have a sneaking suspicion that Cardinals fans aren't going to like it, but I don't know. The only reason I'm saying that is I did this last year. Um, last year, possibly even this year, where I talked about I don't really like the edge that you guys have. I think you need more. And, and all I heard was about how great Chandler Jones is, and you're out of your mind. You don't know what you're talking about. And so I'm looking at the stats here. Uh, Mr. Chandler Jones has done jack squat. I know you love the guy. I know he's got a big history, but the point is he's 30 years old. He's got, uh, what has he got, 10 pressures and one sack, according to Pro Football Focus. That's 10 pressures on 166 attempts, which is, I would say, pathetic. Um, you've got Hassan Reddick is really the only guy that's done anything. And I understand Chandler Jones hasn't played all that much, but you got to understand it's not about total production. I'm talking about the percentage. 10 pressures on 166 attempts is really, really bad. On 166 attempts, you're looking for a minimum of 17 pressures, just to be somewhat basic. He had 10. That's not good enough. Beyond that, Chandler is 30 years old, and next year he's in the final year of his contract. He's not going to get re-signed after next year. So next year we got Chandler Jones, who's clearly massively declining. His grades were terrible across the board, and understandably so, because his stats were terrible. You've got Hassan Reddick, who's a free agent right now. We're going to re-sign him. He's 26 years old. He's doing okay. He's got five sacks, 29 pressures on 270 attempts, so roughly 10% of the time, which isn't good, but it's not terrible. Point is, we don't have any really good pass rush. Golden has one sack. Kennard has two. Uh, Corey Peters has two. It's just it's ones and twos across the board. Got to get better. So it's going to be uh, Reddick. It's going to be Chandler Jones. And it's going to be Quiddy Pay. And after 2021, Chandler goes bye-bye. We've got uh, Reddick and uh, Quiddy Pay. And hopefully Quiddy can step up and be better than, than uh, Hassan Reddick. Because I don't think he's even that good. But beyond that... It's not just that we're re-signing Hassan Reddick. Marcus Golden is currently a free agent, meaning he may not be playing in 2021. Morrow, Irving, uh, Gardeck, I don't think he even plays that much. But these guys are all free agents. The only guys that are locked up for the long term are Kylie Fitz and Devin Kennard. That's it. Again, we're probably going to re-sign Hassan Reddick. That makes him long term. But he's probably going to get overpaid as well because he's a pass rusher and you're going to pay to keep him there. And his production is really not that good. So it's, not, it's just not a good situation to be in. Um, and so we're, we're going to attack it. Again, I don't think Cardinals fans are going to like it, but I'm hoping at this point you realize 
how beneficial it'll be to, to build that up. You've also got guys like Corey Peters and Angelo Blackson and, and Trayvon Coley and Demata Pecco. Pico or Pecco? I thought I always said Pico, but I think it's Pecco. I don't know. All these guys on the interior are also free agents. I, again, I know some guys get re-signed and whatnot, but it's just it's it's an area that is going to rapidly decline if we don't keep kind of feeding the beast a little bit. So again, it's it's a real thin defensive line class, but Quiddy Pay is a good value right here, and we're going to take a swing at that right here and now. With the 21st pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Kyle Pitts, tight end, Florida. So with the Buccaneers, I've always kind of taken the tack that depending on how good the team does depends what direction we go. Um, 21 is not that great, but I, I think regardless of that, we've learned that the Buccaneers are a force in the NFL right now. And um, they don't really need to change up in terms of getting a new quarterback. They need to reload and go back in. Um, this is the 11th best player in the draft, and he's fallen all the way to 21. So that's the first thing I want you to keep in mind. This is a borderline top 10 player um, that has fallen way too far at this particular point in time. Uh, beyond that, Gronkowski's probably out the door. And even if he's not, he's not that productive. So... Again, this is just reloading. We're, we're getting by far the best player in the draft. We're reloading. We're coming back in. Um, I, I tend to think they're going to draft later than this, but again, it is what it is, and um, we're, we're coming back swinging. With the 22nd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins, with their second pick this round, select Dylan Moses, linebacker, Alabama. I just, I, I like it, man. We, we got two Alabama guys, which was by coincidence. Um... The, the first priority was getting a wide receiver in here because we really want to build around Tua. That's going to be the, the biggest the biggest hurdle for our ultimate success. I talked about Miami needing to build and all that stuff, but the biggest hurdle is going to be how good is Tua. Right now, again, is just looking at grades and whatnot via PFF. It's not great, but uh, it's still very early, still very young. He's, we still need to build around him quite a bit. And so that's what we're going to do. But um, now that we've done that, I think the biggest actual issue we have on this team is the defense, specifically the run defense, specifically, specifically the linebackers. These are terrible linebackers in Miami, and uh, they just got to be better. Dylan Moses, one of the few top-tier linebackers in this uh, uh, this draft, first-round prospect and whatnot. So, again, we're going back-to-back -back Alabama. We're, 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 it's, it's not on purpose. we got an Alabama quarterback, wide receiver, and linebacker, probably a couple of – uh, yeah, you've got uh, Raekwon. you got Raekwon at Alabama. Big fan of that guy also. Um, we're, we're turning into Washington. They always got a ton of Alabama guys. Anyways, big, huge need, and it just kind of fell into our lap. It's just, it's the, the draft right now is just kind of going, it's, it's going quite well if, if I'm Miami. Again, linebacker, not always super exciting, but I, I just think it's a, it's a great pick for Miami. With the 23rd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Rondale Moore, wide receiver, Purdue. It's another one that was kind of tough. Um, the Colts are a good football team. I do like the Colts. You kind of wonder, are we loading up and going back in at, like with a wide receiver? Are we trying to mitigate some losses? Are we possibly looking at quarterback? Are we? Some people may be looking at tearing certain things down. Ultimately, we got Pascal, we got Johnson, we got Hilton, all free agents. Uh, Moore is the, we're talking about Rondale Moore, is the second best available option. It just kind of makes sense because we're doing multiple things. This can be seen as a, a reloading thing where now we've got, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of going all in. It could also just be looking at um, just replacing guys that are leaving. So it's, it's a prudent move, but it's also a, a semi-aggressive move. So it kind of just makes the most sense. But again, I'm, I'm kind of iffy on the direction I want to go if I'm the Colts because it seems like we're a really good team it also seems like especially with a quarterback that's kind of a rental we're kind of just floating out there I don't know exactly what the direction is we're going but we're, we're going to stick with what we got we're going to push in we're going to see how well we can do if it doesn't pan out hopefully it's another stacked quarterback class or something because uh, eventually that's going to have to get addressed we're going to need a genuine real Colts identity outside of Phillip Rivers as we move forward. But that's not going to be the uh, question for us today. So Rondale Moore from Purdue to the Colts. With the 24th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select Jeremiah Owosu-Karamoa, linebacker out of Notre Dame. Uh, the, the Browns are... are 
they're really, really clicking on all cylinders except when they're not, right? They're, they're, there's, they're showing glimpses of being a really elite team, which, again, they're, they're the team that I was describing when I said there's way too much talent to be this bad. They, they um, had a GM, Dorsey, that had built up quite a roster, but it just it wasn't going anywhere. And now you're starting to see it. But, it, but you also see the glimmers of just really bad. And so um, one of the areas that I want to address is the linebackers for this team. There's not a lot of defensive pieces in this draft, as I've mentioned several times already. Um, and so when we get uh, Owosu Karamoa from Notre Dame, which, by the way, I like the Notre Dame defense this year. There's a lot of just really mean, bad dudes. And um, getting kind of that, that energy and that, that sort of, I don't know, that, that intensity that comes from being in that kind of a defense and carrying that over to our defense. Not that he's going to come over and be a leader, but you want guys with that mentality of just knowing we're the best, we're the meanest, we're the strongest, we're, we're coming after you, right? I like a defense that feels like they're on offense. They're not defending, they're attacking. And I think that that's, where he's, that's the culture he's coming from. And um, good coverage guy, good, good run defender. He's one of the best linebackers in college football right now. Um, I actually highlighted him recently as a possible guy for the Packers on my Packers podcast, a guy to watch, and he just he blew up on that day, which was – it's always nice when you do that, when you say, hey, check out this guy, and he has a great day. But um, super talented guy. He may have to end up going earlier than this. We'll see what happens when it's all said and done. But Karamoa of Notre Dame to the Browns. With the 25th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars with their second pick this round via the LA Rams select J.C. Horn, cornerback, South Carolina. So the last two picks I think are brand new to these mock drafts. I don't think I've had, actually I, the, the next guy might be two, he might be three in a row. Anyways, I know we've got some guys out. I, I understand that whole thing, but this is the kind of by a lot the worst pass defense in football. So even getting some of the guys back that are out, I don't really trust that this is going to be good enough, uh, just the guys that we have. So I, given that the board is the way that it is, I feel best about bringing a guy in like J.C. Horn plus the guys that are coming back to really give us a solid um, defensive back group. Uh, you know, the Jaguars have quite a ways to go, and obviously we got to focus on building around um, – where is the guy? Oh, Justin Fields. I don't know why I missed that, but we, we've got to build around him eventually. But um, we also want to stick somewhat to our identity of being a really dominant defense. So, again, it was, it was a relatively easy pick because the pass defense is so absolutely putrid for the Jaguars. With the 26th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets via the Seattle Seahawks select Christian Derisaw, offensive tackle, Virginia Tech. Now, I, I have an inkling of what some Jets fans are going to say as far as being pretty upset here um, because you guys drafted a really, really solid offensive tackle last year in, in Mekhi Becton. Um, and so my assumption is somewhere in the comment section is going to be, you moron, we already drafted a tackle, we need a wide receiver. I'm guessing that's roughly what it's going to say. Um I would just counter that with you need five offensive linemen, not one. You've got one really good one. I would like another one because your right tackle is putrid garbage. So we'll worry about why. Having done a couple seven rounds now, there are wide receivers everywhere. I, I get to the point now where I'm going through the list and it's like I don't need wide receivers for this particular team. And there's no, you know, if, if I'm just looking in this range of where they could realistically pick a player, I, I you know, I'll grab a 15 sample 15 players as, as a little group to pick from half of them are wide receivers it's so ridiculously stacked with wide receivers we're getting another tackle right now we're going to continue to build the offensive line to protect Justin Fields and we're going to eventually as we as I said we've got a let me check I've got my mock here but make sure I'm not lying to you there is a wide receiver coming so I got you one relax calm it down but Christian Derisaw, offensive tackle, Virginia Tech to the Jets. With the 27th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tennessee Titans select Javon Holland, defensive back, Oregon. And I, I phrase it that way because he's sort of a safety cornerback hybrid in, in, from what I've seen in college. So you can use him 
any way you want. It also makes it less likely that people are going to be mad at me, and I'm sorry if the camera's shaking. It just is one of those things where I can't stop moving. Um, but you, you can kind of plug and play them wherever you want. But the bottom line is Tennessee is another team that's very, very good right now. But there seems to be a big issue with the, the defense, uh, 20th in points, 25th in yards, especially the pass defense, 21st in net yards per attempt passing, 29th in passing touchdown, 28th in passing yards. Um, so we've got to get better in that regard. You look at the, the guys that you've got, especially the starters. Uh, the one guy that you really like is Amani Hooker. Uh, who's who's a young safety uh, otherwise Malcolm Butler but he's 30 years old so he's not going to be around very much longer um, Jonathan Joseph we haven't really seen enough from in my opinion Kenny Vaccaro just is not my favorite so we need to get better I, again we can put him wherever we want we can put him in the slot we can put him at safety we can put him out wide um, wherever he works best, wherever we need him most, that's what we're going to do with him. But he's a versatile piece for a defense that really could probably use a guy that um, can move around a little bit if need be. So, Javon Holland, Oregon, to the Tennessee Titans. With the 29th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Tyson Campbell, cornerback, Georgia. So Packer fans not going to be super happy with me, but I think if you think about it for a half a second, um, you'll realize that it makes sense. Look, it's the number one offense in football. We can get wide receivers later. Um, I have not done a seven-round mock, but I promise you there are wide receivers coming. But that's not the biggest issue right now. It's just not. Offensive tackle is, is a, a possibility, but um, the way the board is right now, you know, plus Billy Turner has done his job so I, i'm not in a massive rush to replace him right now um when you look at cornerback you got jair alexander you got kevin king who's likely not getting a contract after this year we'll see what happens if he does maybe that changes the equation but i'm assuming he's not who are the corners i mean who, who it's listen in my mind right now this is priority number one it used to be tackled before that it was wide receiver it has morphed at this particular point in time to i think at the top of mind for Brian Gutekunst. And again, of course, it depends how the board falls. But right now, Tyson Campbell is top of the board, um, or at least near the top of the board, and I do think it's one of the bigger needs. So the Packers select Tyson Campbell, cornerback out of Georgia. With the 30th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Kansas City Chiefs select Creed Humphrey, offensive center, Oklahoma. Uh, I think for the Chiefs right now, uh, you know, according to this, they didn't win the Super Bowl, but, you know, obviously they're they're in contention. The biggest thing, we've got our quarterback locked up for roughly 5,500 years. Um, it's just keeping everything kind of afloat. And I don't, I, you know, this is another team where, yeah, there's some elite talent. We're talking elite quarterback. We're talking Tyreek Hill. We're talking about some, you know, Eric Fisher's a good football player and whatnot. But, I mean, there's there's not a ton here that it's like if when these guys all leave, it all falls. It's not like the Legion of Boom where from top to bottom the entire defense is dominant. You start losing pieces, you lose a lot. Um, and so I'm, I'm really just trying to slowly replace as guys go away. And, and again, it's it's boring, but uh, Wiley, Osemele, uh, Reeder, Kilgore, Remmers, none of them have contracts in 2021, and I apologize if I butcher these names, whatever. In 2021, the guys in the final year of their contract, Fisher, Schwartz, Rankin, uh, Duvernay, Tardif, whatever, I hate saying his name. Um, so we're looking at one, two, three-ish guys, uh, Durant, Allegretti, and Yang, who we just recently drafted as being sort of the guys that are going to be in for a long time. And again, I understand some of these guys are going to get re-signed, but some of them are not. We can't afford to pay absolutely everybody. And so especially if we're going to trust guys like Nyang to step up and and be the guy, then we have to let guys go that are very good football players. So I, I, I don't want to understate the importance of offensive line. As boring as some people think that it is, teams will fall apart really quickly when their offensive line falls apart. You want to see a superstar quarterback no longer be a superstar? Watch what happens when he starts getting blasted every other play. We don't need injuries stacking up. We just need to protect the guy. A lot of guys are leaving. Look, we're good. We're good. Just just keep the offensive line protecting the quarterback and we'll be fine. Simple formula. With the 31st pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New Orleans Saints select Pat Fryermuth, tight end, Penn State. So again, it, it's another team where you got to decide what are we going to do. Do we start tearing down and rebuilding? 
you know, being that we're so close, there's not like a lot of elite quarterbacks just sitting there waiting to be taken, according to the board I have. So we're going to just reload. Um, I don't really know what else to do. We came within one game of winning a Super Bowl, meaning we, we lost in the Super Bowl. So we're going to add, it seems a little bit ridiculous, but, you know, that Jimmy Graham dynamic to this offense. We're going to bring that back. And, and we got one more year probably with Drew Brees. And so, I mean, I guess that depends. I mean, he's got the injury and he could always has the option to retire if he chooses to. But assuming he's going to come back, we're going to reload, get him another weapon on offense. And um, I mean, man, they're really, really playing good football right now. And it is an absolute shame that uh, Drew Brees got hurt because I, I, I think the way the trajectory of that team, if Brees was there, I would almost say that they're, they might be borderline favorites, definitely favorites to be in the Super Bowl, possibly my favorites to win it. But I think without Drew Brees, that's going to be tough. So um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it goes. But again, for this particular point in time, I'm looking at a guy like Pat Fryermuth. And again, a lot of it has to do with just value right now from where he is um, and, and who's left on the board. He's pretty by by a pretty wide margin the best available so it just kind of makes sense as being a pretty good fit for the saints that's it i hope you guys enjoyed that mock draft as i said starting tomorrow i'm planning on having mock drafts for the first um let's see we got jets jaguars Bengals, cowboys chargers and eagles all those mock drafts are completely done at this particular point in time because those are the first ones. I know some guys traded into those spots, but we kept it uh, with the originals and we kept it the way that it was. So when, when I do my Cowboys mock, the first pick is going to be pick nine because that's what we traded back to. And then I also added in pick 40 in that second round. So I'm, I'm keeping it that way. There's also no overlap in terms of teams picking the same player. So it was a lot of fun. It's not a full seven round for every team. And the only reason I'm not going to continue doing this is because after this week's set of games, I'm going to be another week behind in terms of the draft order and people are going to start whining and complaining about the draft order. But um, what I will do, the plan is next Monday will be another full first round mock and then we'll start from let's see one two three four five six we'll start at seven and do Monday Tuesday however many uh, seven eight nine ten eleven twelve or whatever right just making sure that we hit all the teams I'm not going to redo teams as things shift but that's that's sort of the general plan and eventually we get through all 32 teams seven round mocks and we just kind of start over um, there's probably going to be some hiccups in the row, but it is what it is. So make sure you please subscribe to this channel. Uh, if you are a Packer fan, please check out the Packer Night podcast. Otherwise, I will catch you hopefully tomorrow.